it is cold and it is breezy outside but i've been in the house too long this winter with snow and ice and everything else we've had to deal with it's time to start thinking about growing plants today's the day we're going to talk about building a greenhouse in the high tunnel to get a jump on spring So I had this idea, um, we've tried to raise our own seedlings and you can germinate them in a germination chamber, which is, you know, converted freezer. And I'm sure you all have seen those plans on the internet, but once they're germinated and they're up and they're starting to grow, they still have to be warm and they still need light and they still need airflow and they need all those things. In the past, I've got a video from some time ago. Uh, where I showed how I created a growing chamber out of insole board. And we grew plants in there, but we had a terrible problem with damping off. Now, part of that might have been because we didn't have sufficient airflow inside. But as time went on, I just decided to outsource the actual propagation of my plants. I found a fellow who does a wonderful job at greenhouse work. I selected the seeds, I selected the trays, I selected the soil, uh, and I selected the calendar. But he had the facility to start the seeds and get them up to the point where they were ready to be put in the field. That meant that he was starting seeds in February, maybe late January, certainly in March, for me to have ready to set in early to mid-May. One of the problems was, some of my winter crops, some of my earliest spring crops, um, he couldn't get to. He was busy doing other things, and I couldn't do them because the temperature in my greenhouse during the daytime might get up to 70-something degrees. It's really a high tunnel. I say a greenhouse. It's really just a high tunnel. So it's just a single layer of plastic over these hoops. It's great. It's great for growing things early and late, but it doesn't have that second layer of plastic that you put over the first layer that then you um, pump it up with a hairdryer type blower and you, and you inflate it so that you create that air pocket between the first layer and the second layer. I'd read a few years ago that you can use your high tunnel. You can grow crops earlier if you create a low tunnel, uh, just some hoops and another layer of plastic over top of them It'll actually raise the temperature under the low tunnel and it'll improve your ability to grow crops in colder weather. Not all crops, just the crops that are kind of cold hardy, but you can get an earlier start on some of them. So because we don't have heat in this high tunnel, because we only have one layer of plastic and heat wouldn't really do much, because we've got roll up curtains and a lot of airflow through here, um, during the day, it's warm. At night, the temperature gets down to within four or five degrees of whatever the outside temperature is, or it even equalizes. So I had a thought. What if I created another tunnel inside of this tunnel? Kind of like a second layer of plastic, but instead of being on the outside and there permanently, it would be on the inside and here temporarily. So we designed a set of plans to build a tunnel inside of this tunnel to wrap it in plastic. And because it'll be inside, we can supply some heat to it. Now, I haven't decided on the exact source of the heat. My initial thought is one of those ceramic heaters connected to a thermostat so I can regulate the temperature. It won't be all of that big. It's gonna be 40 feet long and 10 feet wide. Um, it'll be low, it'll only be seven feet high. And it will warm up in the sun in the daytime, 
But as the daytime sun fades and the nighttime temperatures start to creep in, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to keep the temperature high enough that I can get some of my plants in trays back from the greenhouse where they're going to be started for me and move them into this inside tunnel and keep them going. Now, I also hope that I'll be able to start some seeds here on the farm in a germination chamber, keep them warm, and find a place, maybe with heat mats, to keep them warm enough inside this inside tunnel that I can actually start some of my own plants earlier than I would ever be able to do with just a high tunnel. Okay, so the first thing we did today uh, in order to get ready to create this little greenhouse in a greenhouse um, was we came outside and we, and we got our chop saw out and I created a jig. So the purpose of creating the jig was we learned early on that not all 10 foot pieces of one inch PVC are in fact 10 feet long. So we had to cut them all to equal lengths or as equal lengths as possible uh, so we can make the whole project work. So to make sure that we're cutting the same length every time we set up a jig. Um, what we decided to do was we came up with an average length and sometimes we had to make two cuts, but we ended up with a nice pile of cut pieces that will be used to construct the entire project. So once we got the pieces cut, uh, the next step was to try and assemble a section or two using the connectors that I bought on Amazon. Uh, just to let you know what the total price of the project was, each of these sticks of PVC um, and the connectors all in all are going to cost about $140. That does not include the plastic, which we already had on hand. It was excess plastic from the high tunnel. Um, and there's really nothing else that we needed. We're going to use some rebar to hold the legs up. But beyond that, it's really going to be just a dry fit PVC frame over which we're going to hang plastic. There you have it. We've innovated a greenhouse in the high tunnel. The purpose, of course, is to allow us to get an earlier jump on the season than we would get just with the high tunnel. Having experimented with uh, row hoops and low tunnels in the past and seeing how it jump-started our early vegetable gardening in the past, this gives us an opportunity to do it on a much larger scale, both in the ground and if we choose on tables where we can put plants that have already germinated, have sprouted, and are now in need of some sunlight and in need of some uh, cooler temperatures, uh, but not necessarily um, capable of being raised in the house because there just isn't enough room. So like all farmers, we're innovating. I will let you know uh, how this goes. So far, I came out to the high tunnel this morning. Uh, the temperature outside is in the mid-30s. Um, there is a breeze. It's a little bit breezy out. And when I got into the high tunnel, the temperature in the high tunnel was right around 40. But when I went into the new structure behind me, where I'd also put a thermometer, the temperature was almost five degrees warmer and there's no sunshine today. I also stuck a probe in the soil to check the soil temperature. It is likewise about 45 degrees. That means that I am able to begin raising lettuce, uh, radishes and other early season crops like green onions, um, Swiss chard, uh, arugula, um, a lot of other early season things that will help me get a jump on the season. Now, again, the inside of the greenhouse, 
five degrees or so above the outside temperature without any sunshine. The inside greenhouse, five degrees above that without any sunshine. Plenty of humidity. We're going to install a fan to keep our airflow moving inside the new greenhouse inside of the high tunnel. We have left both ends open. They're flapped about 12 inches over. The moisture is holding them tight. We have the plastic all the way to the ground, all the way around. So we're capturing, and we have a solid roof, so we're capturing all of the moisture, uh, trapping some of the heat. And in addition to that, we're going to have to have airflow. So we have a big fan we're going to put in. We can open the ends up for ventilation to regulate temperature. We can roll the sides up. Nothing is fixed on the ground, and so it's really very flexible. Besides that, when we put it together, we dry fit the whole thing. Uh, the only pieces that were glued were the ones that are constant, the 10-foot pieces that go side to side all the way down the roof. Uh, we glued the fittings on them. That way, when we go to reinstall it, all the legs and everything will line up and we'll be in good shape. The side pieces were all cut. Those will be about five feet each, and they will go into bundles. And then the legs. And that'll be it. So we'll have three bundles of items. We'll have the side in the middle run as bundles of five foot pieces. We'll have the 10 foot cross pieces and the seven foot legs. And we'll be able to store all of it in the barn in a very compact location. This piece of plastic ended up being um, 32 by 40. And the end walls, the doors, we cut four of them seven feet wide and eight feet high. Uh, to allow us to have some overlap on the ground and some overlap at the center pole so that the moisture and the condensation on the inside of the plastic helps to keep it sealed shut. So there you have it, innovating here at Steepleview Farm, sharing it with you. Now, is it going to work? I don't know. Are the tomatoes you plant this year going to make it through the season without a disease or a bug? I don't know. But I know that it sounded like a good idea at the time. We're going to give it a try. We're going to report back to you all along the way and let you know how it's doing. But I'd appreciate your comments and any thoughts you've got, uh, suggestions, uh, criticisms. Uh, constructive criticisms are accepted more readily. Um, any criticism, though, is fine. We'd like to have your comments. Let, you, let us know what you think about this project. Uh, any suggestions that we might make improvements or changes, all of that. And if you haven't yet, right here in the corner, you see this little thing right there? That's a subscribe button. If you would, please, and you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, subscribe to our channel. We are back from the winter doldrums and anxious to begin creating new content as we continue our journey together, trying to get back to that wonderful place, that kind of land that we lived in when we all lived in Eden. We're going to work together to do that. We're glad to have you with us along the journey. Stay with us. Another episode coming up very soon. Take care.